paper it's going to actually have. We are just a few days away from Thanksgiving and in celebration of this holiday coming up, I am going to take you guys with me to a local butcher. I'm going to introduce you to somebody that I've recently gotten to know and I've learned a little bit about his business, him and his family's business, uh, a new business in the area. I'm gonna show you what he's doing to get ready for this holiday season. He's got a lot of orders coming up for Thanksgiving. So I just got here to the butcher. It is called Grass Fed Rochester. I live just outside of Rochester, New York. So we're gonna go ahead and meet the owner of Grass Fed Rochester and get to know his story a little bit. substitutes for the masses uh, to be used in however the customer wants to. So uh, we have like a chicken substitute, uh, we have a very popular bacon substitute, um, breakfast sausage, other kinds of sausage, and for this holiday season coming up we actually have a vegan uh, stuffed roast. Look at this beauty right here. <laughs> So what is this? So this is yuba, which is like soy skin. So soy skin. If, if you're like boiling soy milk, this is what forms on top. Oh, and cool. So people pull it off and they use it for the stuff. I thought we'd try using it for the skin for the turkey. I'm gonna wrap it with the, the yuba skin. I have got some root vegetables over here and a tray that I just had kind of lying around. So we figure I'll put it in there and then we could um, roast it in the pan and see how it is, put together a little gravy and we can give it a, give it a shot. Yeah. Being vegan is just a much more compassionate way of living. Uh, it kind of takes the focus off of yourself and makes you think about others, uh, other beings, and your impact on the world around you. So uh, that's kind of why I thought this would be a good business to start. Uh, I think a lot of people are scared of that word. I think they think it's uh, a little overwhelming. They're not quite sure how to do this themselves. And this is a way for them to kind of almost baby step uh, into trying out some things that are maybe outside their comfort zone. Um, they don't have to buy a five pound bag of nutritional yeast and keep it in the cupboard and use it only once and be like, what do I use this for? Um, I can do that for you. And then and one argument I hear a lot when I say that I'm vegan or vegetarian or plant-based is, but I love bacon. And this guy makes really, really good baconless bacon. Um, so it's not always just because you have a love for the taste of something doesn't mean it has to actually support animal cruelty. You can still enjoy that flavor, those tastes, in a way um, that doesn't doesn't harm animals. So I would say your bacon, but the goal is for it to taste like bacon. Yes, but even though I've uh, transitioned to becoming vegan myself, uh, that doesn't mean I, you know, lost the fondness for those food items, right? I remember finally going on vacations and get, eating a steak, and that was, you know, something that I, I really enjoyed the taste of. But at this point in my life, I don't do that because of the impact it has on the animals, the environment, etc. Same thing with bacon. I'm a big fan of bacon uh, and that's what kind of made me search out and make this version of bacon that I, I think is actually a really pretty good solid substitute for it uh, to give you that bacon taste without actually you know, giving you the pig. So one thing that I hear a lot from people is that fake 
fake meats are really full of tons of processed ingredients and uh, they're not real. So tell us a little bit about what your ingredients are and uh, the types of ingredients you're using. Really a pretty common ingredients that, that are out there. Uh, the main portion of it is tofu. Uh, and then it, it also uses vital wheat gluten, which is essentially a uh, flour that is the protein portion. Um, and that makes up kind of the bulk of what you have. Uh, but then it's just spices, poultry seasoning, white wine, uh, I use miso. And the stuffing is just a leek and fennel stuffing. They're all pretty common ingredients. Yeah. The main thing here is just that with any, any recipe that you're making, right? It's all about the uh, kind of ingredients they're adding to it and the you know proportions of what you're using. Um, if you've ever eaten just plain tofu, it's that, it's plain, right? It doesn't really taste, it tastes like tofu, which not everyone finds exciting. But if you add spices, if you add things to it, then it becomes something more than tofu. And that's kind of what we have here, right? With um, seitan, which is essentially what we have made here. Um, by itself, the first time I made it, uh, I didn't really do a whole lot to it. And I was, let's just say, underwhelmed. It was not very good. But now, you know, I've gotten to a point where I've learned that it's more about just making sure that you're seasoning it enough to give yourself uh, the flavors that you're looking for and to really kind of make it kind of come alive. And the cool thing about this meal is if you look at it, this right here is a product of soy. Um, where you take soybeans and you turn it into tofu and it creates this really cool byproduct that almost is like skin um, from beans. And so you got some root vegetables and onions right here. And then the flavors that he was describing um, inside the roast, fennel, there's all kinds of seasonings in there that you can grow right in your garden. Is you can take these ingredients from your garden and you can turn them into plant-based alternative proteins. You're in this space now, which is temporary, and you have goals of opening a traditional, what we think of as like a traditional storefront Actual, butcher yeah. shop. You got it. Basically, 200 orders in one a month and a little over a month. Yeah. Month and a week. Yeah, that's impressive. Did it's, you expect that to be picked up so quickly? Uh, no, no, that was definitely something that kind of took us by surprise. So we just wanted to kind of see what the level of interest was, uh, to see if there actually is a, a business here. So um, we didn't, we haven't really done a whole lot of advertising outside of like social media. Uh -huh. um, and it's really kind of taken off. Wrap it up, and then we give it a little twist. We'll tie it off. And now what is this? Cheesecloth? This is cheesecloth, yep. And then we have our little butcher's twine. so much like turkey. I mean, I don't know. I haven't had turkey in a really long time, but. That is some good looking. Uh... So you want me to slice, do a few slices, throw some vegetables, 
plate it and then put the, yeah. the gravy in. Yeah, that sounds perfect. Honestly, best mock meat I've had. Very, very good. My philosophy is, is if you don't have to hurt or kill an animal in order to be healthy and thriving and eat delicious food and eat amazing food, then why, why do it? Now we harm the environment, we harm animals, we harm the planet just by existing, um, whether it's through building our homes or driving our cars we can minimize our impact as much as possible and one way we can do that is through the food that we eat. And what I love about grass-fed Rochester is they're providing food options that decrease our harm on turkeys for Thanksgiving, on pigs through, through a bacon option, um, and really focus on finding amazing food without creating that negative harm that we can avoid through the food that we choose to eat.